We've seen um, the most severe criticism of AUKUS come from former Prime Minister Paul Keating. I've seen um, some of that criticism has been raised by the United States with our politicians when they go there. Have you received um, any uh, feedback or questions from our partners about what that criticism might mean for the actual delivery of the program? So I do VTCs all the time with the US. I did one yesterday mm -hmm. morning. Uh, they are absolutely committed. Uh, we saw two weeks ago there is bipartisan support in the US system as there is in the UK system as they're here in Australia, that all three countries are committed to delivering on uh, AUKUS program there. Um, you know, I talk to my uh, counterparts on a very regular basis, as do uh, everyone that, that works in the team and that, and all we're hearing at the moment is absolute commitment and what they say is they're all in on this. As another uh, thing Paul Keating pointed out was that we'd only be able to have one third of the submarines in the water and operational at any one time. Is that right? So obviously uh, all major capabilities, whether it be ships, aircraft or, or tanks, need to go through a maintenance cycle. Mm -hmm. And the aim is that you maintain, then you train and then you have uh, a range of them operational so that you can have an enduring and sustainable amount of capability. So with nuclear powered submarines, uh, as Collins happens at the moment, uh, some do uh, deep level maintenance and some do just very short levels of maintenance. So the aim is though is to get many out in the water at any one time. But we could be in a situation where we have a fleet of eight, but uh, to, you know, for the average person they would think that all eight could be used at once, but that's not actually right, is it? Well no, because obviously you would want to, to be able to do maintenance on a rolling schedule of, of all of our submarines or all of our ships. I said, but the aim is to make sure that you have a fleet, a capability that is ready and available to deploy at government direction. On a more immediate issue, we're seeing submarine rotation force west. Uh, that's going to be starting next year. We're going to see increased rotations. Is that a time limited period where we will see that or is this something that will happen indefinitely now? We'll see uh, stronger rotations going forward. So that, that uh, from 2027, so really, as you mentioned, from 23, we'll see increased visits and we would seek to provide greater support to the US and the UK. But from 27 is when the US and UK see that they would then forward rotate the Virginia class submarines with uh, up to four uh, at any one point in time. Mm -hmm. And the aim of that one is really for us to immerse ourselves into a nuclear ecosystem, to embed people in their submarines for training, to be able to have an industrial base that can support and maintain the submarines in a regulatory system. And that is really designed for us to become sovereign ready. So in the early 30s, we are ready, we are capable, we have the appropriate safety and security mechanisms in place to acquire Virginias from the US. So reading into that, it's not a permanent forward rotation of these submarines. At a time when we have our capability, it won't be required. It would be at a time determined by both uh, the US, the UK and Australia, mm -hmm. uh, what time, you know, how long the Surfwest model lasts for. But certainly the aim is to get us up to a point that we are sovereign ready in the early 30s. We know defence procurement projects often have blowouts, not only in the budget, but also in time. In terms of uh, the option of purchasing another Virginia class submarine from the US, when does that decision need to be made? Do we need to decide that well before the first SSN AUKUS rolls off um, the production line? Well, it certainly doesn't need to be decided now. Um, you know, we intend to commence construction on SSN AUKUS at the end of the decade. Uh, the UK are looking at commencing construction of SSN AUKUS in uh, Barrow in about 2027. We've given ourselves enough time for to be able to build the first one here in Australia and that. Um, so at this stage, we're planning on three Virginias being transferred to Australia in the 2030s. Is that 2042 date that's put out there in terms of the first one rolling off our production line, is that a conservative estimate? Uh, we have certainly factored in uh, a level of risk for schedule and that. And I think that's just a wise thing to do. For, uh, we haven't built a boat for a while. We wanted to not overcommit and we wanted to do this safely and securely, basically because it's nuclear technology, it needs to be methodical. So we believe that the three Virginias in the 2030s and then the first SSN AUKUS in 2042 is a very good timeline that we can work towards. And just finally, I'm sure you've had a lot of uh, interactions with your uh, regional counterparts. What has been the feedback on AUKUS and has it been what you expected? Yeah, so I think we've had some very positive feedback from our regional counterparts here. And there was uh, over 60 uh, calls was done before the announcement. There's been significant outreach from our DFAT officials and also military officials through the region. 
Um, we've clearly articulated why uh, the government needs this capability, what it's there for. It's there to defend Australia and protect our people. And I think they understand that and we intend to very much uh, work with our partners, the Pacific Islands, our, our Asian friends there, to, uh, under, for them to understand why we are uh, building this capability. Vice Admiral Mead, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much.